No, I don't waste no time Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video and I've mentioned it a few times but um, you guys still keep requesting content like this. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George. I have my own social media slash advertising agency where we help brands uh, or basically winning brands scale even further by leveraging Facebook ads. And Alongside that, I have my own education business where I basically teach you guys on how to do the same. So how to start your own advertising agency, how to get your first clients in, and also how to get results. Now, with regards to social media marketing or social media advertising, you have lead generation clients where uh, basically the goal is to get them leads that they can then uh, ring up, call up, and then close on that particular product or service that they've got. And you can also uh, have e-com clients where you basically help those mainly stores get more sales by leveraging, in this case, Facebook advertising. Now, with regards to lead generation, I have a lot of uh, free content on my YouTube channel that, um, you, know, you guys can watch and follow along. I have a few watch and build videos and just general information on how to get results for lead generation clients. With regards to e-commerce, that is something that I do mainly save for my coaching students and you know those that are enrolled into my paid programs because they pay good money for it. And you know it wouldn't be right or it wouldn't be fair if I just start showing you guys you know my e-com tactics on how to scale e-com stores from zero to hero uh, with Facebook ads because they pay good money for it, and I'm just showing you guys it for free so usually I shy away from ecom type videos because like I said you know it, it is all in my pay program and I don't want to regurgitate um, stuff that people pay good money for on my channel here for free so usually I will refer you guys on to my pay program but with that said um, I do constantly get these requests on how to uh, you know set up um, basically campaigns for e-com stores, how to set up the top of the funnel, how to retarget people, etc. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a small exception. And if you know the reception of this video is good, then I might make this a recurring thing. I will keep this very much service level because um, like I said, you know, all my in-depth stuff is in my pay program. Um, so I will sort of keep this light, but just to give you guys a generic uh, or general idea, I, I should say, um, on what to do if you have an e-com client without prior data or anything you know that basically can help you. Um, so no ads, no data, nothing like that. What to do in that situation. So before we actually begin, what I want you guys to understand is the funnel. Okay, so uh, here come my drawing skills. As you can see, this is the funnel. This is the top of the funnel where we basically get people in from a larger audience and we, we basically siphon them through to uh, the bottom of the funnel where we basically you know, get paid customers, okay? So this is where we earn the money and this is where we basically get people in, okay? And this funnel is basically your e-com store. So the top of the funnel is literally you know, people that have never heard of your brand or your client's brand before um, and you know, they are unaware of anything, you know, they don't, they don't know the customer journey, they don't know, um, you know, the vision of the brand, etc. And in the bottom of the funnel, it's basically people that have uh, made a purchase or a conversion, you know, they've come to the store um, and they've uh, purchased one of the products or, you know, items that they've got in the store. Okay, so we need to keep this in mind when we run campaigns as well, because the message that you send to someone that is here at the bottom of the funnel is going to be different than the message that you send to someone at the top of the funnel. Because someone at the bottom of the funnel needs a different kind of message to make them uh, come and get a purchase. Whereas people at the top of the funnel, uh, they need much more information on the brand and they need to uh, basically go through that customer journey before um, you know they, they make a purchase eventually. For example, for a recurring customer, so someone that has already made a purchase, there's no point in explaining about the brand and the vision, etc., because they already know all that. And with regards to people that are at the top of the funnel that haven't heard from um, the brand or store before, there's no point in saying, hey, um, you know, uh, for returning customers, we've got this loyalty program and stuff like that because they've never heard of the brand before, so they don't even know what a loyalty customer entails, okay? So we've got the top of the funnel, which is basically, you know, shortened for TOF, and then we have the bottom of the funnel, which is BOF, okay? So bottom and top. Then we also have the MOF, which I've already explained 
uh, before in a free video on this YouTube channel as well. And middle of funnel is uh, basically people that we need to nurture. We need to guide people from the top of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel. So let's say someone has already heard of the brand before, uh, they're in the top of this funnel and um, they basically, you know, they're onto the website or anything like that. Um, we then need to guide those people from the top to the bottom and we do that with the middle of funnel campaign so just to give you, give you guys a bit more of a practical you know understanding of all of this top of the funnel is cold traffic people that have not heard of the brand or store before and have not shown any interest before middle of funnel is people that we nurture in order to get down to the top of the funnel people that have been onto the website we retarget those people people that have engaged on facebook we retarget those people people that have engaged or followed on Instagram, people that are on the email list and so on and so forth. Then the bottom of the funnel are people that are relatively warm or relatively hot leads. So for example, someone that has been on the website, been on the store and has added to cost, but has not yet made a purchase. People that um, have maybe added to cost and also initiated checkout, but abandoned the checkout uh, before they actually you know added their payment on credit card details. People that have um, I don't know, added multiple items to the store, but have not uh, made, you know, become a converted uh, customer. And then, of course, we also have a loyalty uh, part of the funnel, which is basically a funnel in itself. It's basically people that have been through the bottom of the funnel, have been, you know, uh, paying customers, and then we basically show them a loyalty campaign where we upsell them and cross-sell them on, on different items. We say, hey, we saw that you purchased a product A, you will probably like product B and C as well. Or have you also tried product B alongside product A and so on and so forth, okay? So loyalty is upsells and cross-sells. Today, what we're going to be doing is focusing on the top of the funnel. So people that have not heard of the brand of store before, how to get those people onto the website. So what I'll do is just quickly create a second slide here. Oh, okay, I need to upgrade. We will not be upgrading today. I do not use this uh, all too much. So what I'll just do is quickly erase all of this. Um, and then what we're going to be doing is basically showing you guys or explaining to you guys um, how to set up a top of funnel campaign. Okay, so the way it is now, at the basic Q4 of 2020, uh, because these tactics do change over time, and um, that is the issue with um, YouTube videos, right? Like, once you put it there, people expect that video to be relevant for years and years to come. And especially when it comes to Facebook, uh, what was relevant a few months ago is no longer relevant today. For example, if I recorded this video, let's say one year ago from today, I would probably say, okay, what you need to do is set up one campaign with 10 different ad sets. Um, each individual ad set has got one individual interest based you know, uh, target. And then from there, we basically see, okay, who has added to cost or which interest has gotten an add to cost, which interest has gotten an initial checkout and so on and so forth. Now, the way Facebook's AI is developing and the way Facebook's algorithm is constantly changing and constantly learning, we no longer need to do this. So what I'll do now for the top of the funnel, is set up one campaign. So um, what I'll do is I'll just quickly create a square here. And then what I'll do is I'll save you guys my writing skills when drawing, I'll just write here the campaign. So the campaign is a conversion campaign. And the objective of the conversion campaign is to optimize for pages, okay? Now, for those of you that get all their panties in a bunch saying, oh, we can't optimize for pages right away because the pixel hasn't got enough data, etc." Yeah, you think come back to 2018, guys. You no longer need to run traffic campaigns to get data on the pixel. You no longer need to guide the pixel through from view content to pages, etc. That is no longer necessary, okay? We can optimize for pages right off the bat. Yes, you might get learning limited, which is basically an indication from Facebook saying that, um, you know, there's not enough room for, for Facebook to learn, you know, who the best, uh, or who, who will convert most. But if that really affects your conversions, then maybe go to add to cart. So optimize for add to cart. But in my opinion, 99.9% .9 of the time with an e-com store, optimize for purchase every step of the funnel. Okay, so we have one campaign. Within that one campaign, what I want you to do is set up two ad sets. Okay, and for, for those of you that have experience within e-com, you guys might have a different approach to this. This is the way I do it, and this is the way I've gotten a lot of results for our clients, and we've been able to scale a lot of brands uh, with this method. Okay, so what I want you to do now is run one campaign completely broad. 
no interest targeting, no different you know, selection of placements, just broad targeting. You can select the gender and the age uh, based on what the client gives you. If the client doesn't give you any information about that, uh, then run it on all genders, all ages, okay? So for example, uh, we've done this tactic for a, um, a brand that basically had female, um, female, I forget the, the name of the shoe, but it's basically um, like slip-on shoes for females. So obviously there's no point in running that for males unless you know you get really creative and say, okay, males that wanna buy this for their uh, wife or girlfriend or spouse or whatever. Um, but in this case, you know, because it was a female brand, we ran it to only females, but other than that, the interest was broad. In this case, just run one campaign completely broad, all placements, and then one campaign where we have stacked interests based on what you think will work, okay? And with that said, again, I do need to refer to my program. If you wanna know how to basically find those interests, etc., cetera, um, I do need to refer you onto the program because that is something that, um, like I said, I have entire modules on how to do this. Um, quick tip for those of you that are not in my program, all you need to do is go to Audience Insights within the Business Manager and do your research there based on pages, pay, based on information that your client gives you, okay? So one campaign, two ad sets. These ad sets are completely identical, okay? It's basically the only reason why we have two ad sets is to test whether broad or the interests are getting you, um, you know, the best you know, CPAs, etc. Okay, then within the one ad set, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'll draw out one ad set now, but both of those ad sets will be the same, okay? So what I'll do, if I can, is there a way to move this over? Yes, there is, okay. So I'll do broad, but stacked interest is the same layout. So back on the pencil. So within broad, what I want you to do is test out up to, depending on the budget, up to five different images. The main goal of this objective with the top of the funnel, obviously is to get people onto the website, but it's also because we have not got any data, right, in this uh, in this case study, it's to find that winning image, to find that winning creative to see which image gets us the best results. Okay, so image one, well, I'll just type it out, it'll be easier. Image one, and then what I'll do is I'll erase the one here, okay, it's for erasing the image as well. So image one, there we go. And then, there we go, image one, four. Okay, so we've got the four images. Now in terms of the dynamic creative, uh, switch this off because the dynamic creative limits the amount of data that we get for those of you that don't know what dynamic creative is. It will basically allow you to run these images within the one ad and then Facebook will basically decide which image gets shown to your, um, to your customers. And then based, that is obviously based on the, how they react to your images. So let's say out of the four images, image two gets the most people to stop scrolling, and the most people to click, then Facebook will favor image two over one, three, and four. In this case, because we want to find that winning image ourselves, we are going to run this without dynamic creative. With that said, we are going to be switching on CBO. So this on ad set level is going to be CBO. So that is basically telling Facebook that let's say our budget is, I don't know, 20, 20 a day, yeah? So we've got a $20 a day budget. Then with CBO, we are telling Facebook that we do not want Facebook to basically give $10 a day to broad and $10 a day to the stacked interest. Facebook can decide which ad set gets what part of the budget. Usually Facebook will allocate up to 80% of the budget to the ad set that Facebook finds um, you know, has the most potential. So it could be that, uh, let's say 16% of the of uh, $16 of the budget, so roughly 80% will go to broad, and the remaining $4 will go to stacked. Okay, could also be vice versa. It could also be 50/50. You know, that's completely dependent on Facebook. So $20 a day, F Facebook can decide how much budget goes to which uh, interest, and then within the ad sets, we run this on static. So not on dynamic, but on static. So basically, these images are duplicated within the one ad set, okay? All this will be one 
copy. So one one copy within four, four images. So every single image has got the same text. In, you know, in other words, um, because the goal is not to find the winning piece of copy that will come later down the line. The goal is to find the winning image. Okay. Every single in terms of copy, if you want a brief example, what what you could do is just headline. So mention something about the brand, um, and then a benefit of the brand, and then the call to action in the headline as well. Um, you can decide for yourself if you want to have the link in the headline or not. And then obviously the destination URL is the website or the store. Okay, so this is basically how you'd run a top of funnel campaign. Broad stacked interests. So if we can, let me see if it's possible to duplicate this. Duplicate. There we go. So ignore the OF, but basically the stacked interest will be the same as the broad. Okay, so this is how we'd run it. We'd run this for 72 hours, so three days. And why three days? Because that is the equilibrium point um, at which we can basically generate the most amount of data in the least amount of time. So the equilibrium point for us is three days, and then we can basically decide, okay, you know, what changes we need to make. Um, after that three-day period. If you, for example, make changes after one day, then you haven't given Facebook enough time to learn and to optimize. With that said, the Facebook learning phase is seven days, so basically Facebook will try and find a campaign that can get Facebook 50 events within seven days. Um, if you can't get, if Facebook is not confident that it can get 50 events within seven days, then we'll get learning limited. But in this case, because we wanted to speed things up a bit, 72 hours is uh, a sufficient amount of time to make an adequate uh, decision. Then after 72 hours, we'll look back at our comp campaign. We've told Facebook that we want to basically get purchases. So obviously any image that has gotten purchases um, are winning images and we will continue with those. Um, for the, let's say hypothetically speaking, we haven't gotten any purchases at all. Then from there, we look at the initiate checkouts. How many initiate checkouts have we gotten? Have any of the images gotten initiate checkouts? If not, then we go to add to carts. And the goal here is to basically continue with those that have one to 1.5 times the CPA that we are aiming for. So let's say, for example, our product is $50. Then what we want to find is an add to cart or an initiate checkout that is 1.5 times $50. So let's say $75. If We've gotten an added cost, but it's cost us $100. Wouldn't make sense because we're only running this on $20 a day for three days. But hypothetically speaking, then we'd kill that as well. Another thing we look at is the outbound CTR. So let me just quickly draw that here. The outbound CTR is basically the amount of clicks that we've generated that go off of the Facebook platform and on to the website. That's why it's called outbound. So what you need to just visualize is like a highway or a motorway, depending on if you're in the US or UK. And then you are basically taking the next exit off of the highway or motorway. So outbound off of the highway or motorway onto you know whatever uh, road or street you're going to, or whatever city you're going to. In this case, it's the same thing. We're going off of the Facebook platform and we are driving traffic to the website. And then what we know is what the outbound click-through rate is. If the outbound click-through rate is less than 1.5%, then we automatically kill. If, of course, if it's gotten a purchase, by all means, keep it going. But if we've gotten no purchases and our outbound uh, CTR is less than 1.5%, then in my opinion, that image is not performing well enough. What you need to think is, if the outbound CTR is less than 1%, that means that for every 100 people that visit that store or that CEO campaign, I should say, less than one person clicks through. So obviously we're losing a lot of traffic on the front end, which means that yes, if we do continue with those images and we do manage to get a purchase, the cost of purchase will be very expensive because like I said, we're spending a lot of money to get someone through to that flow. So what we do is we basically look at the outbound CTR. If it's more than 1.5%, then by all means keep it. If it's less than 1.5% and it's not performing well, then consider changing it. Um, and in my opinion, if any, anything below 1.5% is just a no-go unless it's getting purchases. And of course, you know, sometimes there are images that uh, work really well, but have an outbound CTR of let's say 0.6%, then 
you know, that's just based on the data. Might be something there. Um, maybe the audience that we're targeting is just not interested enough. Maybe there is there should be an audience within that audience. So let's say we have a fitness brand, and only people that are into fitness but are into ketogenic the, the ketogenic diet are interested in that particular image. Then yes, on the whole, the outbound CTR is low. But every time it targets someone that is interested in the ketogenic diet that person will go through and make a purchase. Then we need to look at the uh, the interest, basically, rather than the images. But, you know, forget everything I said. If the outbound CTR is less than 1.5%, consider changing it. The goal is after 72 hours to, to continue with those that have added cart and initiate checkouts with a, um, a CPA of 1.5 times, or basically a 1.5 times CPA or lower. So let's say the product is $100, and um, or let's say, what did we say last time, $50, and we can get a add to cart for $75 or less, then continue with that. If not, then um, consider changing that up. Kill off the uh, losing creatives and then continue with winning creatives and then add more to it. So let's say after three days, image two is a winner, image one is a loser, image three is a winner as well, and image four is a loser. Then what we do is we kill off these losing images and then we just add two more. So in this case, that will be um, image five and image six. And then we run that for three days as well. And we continue alternating those images until we find images that are getting us purchases and are getting us conversions. And then from there, we can start testing out different audiences within the stacked. Um, if, you know, let's say the broad will outperform the stacked, then we can test out different stacks to see how that compares with broad. And we constantly change every step of the flow. We're starting with the image. The main goal was to find our winning creative. Then from there, once we have that winning creative, we can test out different audiences. Once we have the winning audience, we can test out different forms of copy. Then uh, we basically have set up our top of the funnel and that is how I basically do it. Again, as I mentioned, you know this is very broad and I understand that I haven't really gone into the campaign itself, but this is just strictly to give you guys a bit of an idea of what to run in terms of the e-com, um, in terms of the e-com you know, campaigns. Um, if you want to know more about this, then I highly recommend you check out my paid program because this is basically what we discuss on a weekly basis because alongside the course, we also have one hour coaching sessions uh, every single Sunday where I basically show you guys my own campaigns that I'm running for my own clients and basically how you can um, mimic the results that I've been getting so you can get the same results for your clients. But anyway, this is uh, all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you want to see more campaigns or more videos like this. Because like I said, you know, if this does get a good reception, then um, I'm happy to create more videos like this. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.